space weather update, solar flare and radio blackout update on Sunspot AR2816. It erupted causing an M1 class solar flare. This happened on April 19 and it's incoming. NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded the extreme ultraviolet flash. Now what is an M1 class solar flare? A solar flare is an explosion of the sun that happens when energy stored in twisted magnetic fields, usually above sunspots, is suddenly released. The flares produce a burst of radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to X-rays and even gamma rays. Scientists classify solar flares according to their X-ray brightness and wavelength, range 1 to 8 angstroms, and there are three categories. X-class flares are big, there are major events that can trigger planet-wide radio blackouts and long-lasting radiation storms. M-class flares, like the one we had this time, are medium size and they cause brief radio blackouts that affect Earth's polar regions. Minor radiation storms sometimes follow an M-class flare. And compared to X and M-class events, the C-class flares are small, with few noticeable consequences here on our Earth. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now this is the space weather latest. We also have the Lyrid meteor shower. The Earth is approaching a stream of debris from comet Thatcher, C1861 G1, the source of the annual Lyrid meteor shower. And if forecasters are correct, the shower will peak on the night tonight, April 21st to 22nd. Usually sky watchers count 15 plus Lyrids every single hour. This year, bright moonlight will sharply reduce visibility despite the glare, but it's still possible to see a Lyrid. Now, this solar flare that we had, we're talking about the M1 class from spot, sunspot AR2816. One of the strongest flares of young solar cycle 25, a pulse of X-rays and ultraviolet radiation from the flare ionized the top of Earth's atmosphere, causing a shortwave radio blackout over the Pacific Ocean. This is the blackout map that we see, according to NOAA. The high frequency, you can see the red, no, the purple, blue, uh, light blue, green, yellow, the most intense. High altitude protons, and this is what was uh, blacked out by the solar flare. Now, marine mariners and ham radio operators in the area might have noticed unusual propagation at frequencies below 20 megahertz. And interestingly, during the radio blackout, the sun generated its own burst of radio noise. Shock waves from the solar flare ripped through the sun's atmosphere, creating plasma instabilities and natural radio emissions. The solar radio emission refers to radio waves that are naturally produced by the sun. I didn't know that until I just read it. Now, primarily from the lower and upper layers of the atmosphere called the chromosphere and the corona, respectively. The sun produces radio emissions through four known mechanisms, each of which operates primarily by converting the energy of moving electrons into radiation. And the four emissions mechanics mechanisms are thermal, bream, strong, lung, or the free, free emission, gyromagnetic emission, plasma emissions, and electron, cyclotron, maser emission. Now, the first two are incoherent mechanisms, which means that they are the summation of radio, radiation generated independently by many individual particles. They're responsible for the persistent background emissions that slowly vary as structures in the atmosphere evolve. And the latter two are coherent mechanisms referring to special cases where radiation is efficiently produced at a particular set of frequencies. Coherent mechanisms can produce much larger Brightness, temperatures, intensities, 
They're primarily responsible for the intense spikes of radiation called solar radio bursts, which are byproducts of the same processes that lead to other forms of solar activity like solar flares and coronal mass ejections. Now, NOAA reports the detection of type 2 and type 4 bursts. These radio bursts may have penetrated the blackout, causing roars of static in the loudspeakers of shortwave radios at the same time that normal terrestrial signals were suppressed. Researchers show that solar radio bursts can interfere with the navigation of whales, the poor creatures. Surprising way solar storms can beach whales, but we'll go into that in another uh, video. This is what is happening today. So if we have any, if you're living on the uh, west coast or uh, somewhere on the uh, uh, east uh, Asian coasts, Australia even, beware because you have, you can have it today and tomorrow. Radio interference from this solar flare. Thank you for your support.